Hey guys, Radic here from Netvolt. I'm here on site at one of our client's premises where we're doing an installation of our Starlink plus 4G seamless failover solutions. I've got Nick here from ATS. He's gonna be helping us getting the equipment mounted on the roof. Here in front of me, I've got our external antenna pole and the associated brackets. That's what's gonna be installed on the roof itself. We have Dishy McFlatface himself. So he's obviously going up on the roof. And this here is our Cisco router that has our technology with our seamless 4G failover built in. We also have an external 4G antenna that's gonna help with the signal direction and being able to point that to the closest mobile phone tower. Along with a Cisco video phone as well. This particular solution, the client will be using video calls back to their head office when he's working here from home. So let's get this installed on the roof and get cracking with the installation from there. Okay, so our guys have finished the installation on the client's roof here. We've got our uh, roof mounted pole with Dishy installed at the top here. So the Starlink terminal is installed at the top right here, uh, pointing straight up at the sky. We also have our external 4G antenna that we have aligned to the closest 4G tower down this direction. And uh, we've actually aligned this based on the Fresnel report zone that we prepared for the client earlier. So we know we're pointing this in the best possible direction. Um, but this is all nice and sturdy, installed on the roof here. All this is nice and uh, neat running through the pole itself so we can minimise damage to any cables going forward. But this is all finished from upstairs uh, on the roof section here. So let's go inside and have a look what we've got inside the home office itself. Okay, so we've come inside now and we're inside the customer's home office. So the guys have finished the installation on the roof now. And over here, we've got the cables coming down from the roof. We've got the cable for the Starlink terminal here, along with the two external coax cables for the 4G LTE antenna. Those cables plug into the Starlink power over ethernet adapter here. That's the cable for Dishy. And we've got the Starlink router connected up here as well to the unit. I'm gonna use the auxiliary port on the back of the router to do some speed tests on this, just so we can see what the service looks like in a plain vanilla Starlink setup. So we've got that directly on my laptop, so let's have a look what we've got from speed tests. If we go over to speedtest.net and hit go on our speed test, you can see the ping that's come back through on that, pretty good from a, a ping perspective. And here goes the speed test. Three hundred megabits per second, not too bad. All right, the upload test on that thirty odd, eh, not too bad from a speed test perspective. All right, great. Let's flick over to fast.com and run a speed test on fast.com. Two hundred. Not too bad from a speed test on fast.com either. But we're not gonna leave this in the plain vanilla styling type setup. We're gonna augment this, add our Cisco router to it, and show what this looks like when we start running these connections through our data centers and what we can add to the mix here. So I'll swap this around, replace the Starlink router with the Cisco, and let's look at the setup after this. Okay, so we've swapped out um, the Starlink router with our Cisco router here. Now, the Starlink router is a great basic router, fine for, for most home users. We've got a solution that's a bit more prosumer focused. So the Cisco routers that we deploy feature BGP and MPLS technology, and we run our own smarts in there to be able to achieve a seamless 4G LTE failover. I'll show you what I mean. Before we do that, let's have a quick speed test again and check to make sure that everything's still the same as what we had using the basic Starlink router. So back over here, over onto speed test and let's run a speed test. While that speed test is running, you'll notice the IP address down here. This is not a Starlink IP address. This is one of our IP addresses. And that's 
part of how we achieve um, the seamless 4G failover. We give you a public static IP address for port forwarding, DMZs, things like that. And the speed test on that, you can see we're getting you know, over 300 megabits per second, um, similar sort of pings of what we were saw before, and upload speeds, yeah, around about 20, 22 megabits per second on the upload side of things. Fantastic. I'm gonna go over here to a command prompt window and do a ping to Google's DNS servers 8.8.8.8. And I'm just gonna let that run in the background. And you can see we're getting 49, 50, around about 50 millisecond ping times on that. Great. On this other window here, I'm gonna simulate some live network traffic by downloading a Ubuntu Linux ISO file. And just let that run in the background. You can see we're getting around about six to seven megabytes per second on that download. Just leave that running. While that's all running, I wanna show you guys Netmon. Netmon is our network monitoring and analysis tool that we use, our network operations team uses, and we give our clients and their channel partners access to this tool as well. The great thing about this tool is it shows us a lot of information about an internet connection and these Starlink connections, Starlink plus NetVault 4G LTE failover is the sort of full term that we're using on these, uh, is no exception here. We've got lots of information that we can look at. We can see the ping latency on these connections. You can see that sitting there at around about 50 odd milliseconds from the ping time. And you can see some traffic graph statistics on this as well. If we go and have a look at the uptime on the routers, you know, all this sort of information is sitting here as well, and that's ready to go. Most importantly is the amount of traffic that's going across that link. And you can see right now, it's showing around about you know, 40 megabits per second right now across that traffic, but that will update every 60 seconds, right? So Netmon gives us some great analysis on these connections. If there are multiple connections that a customer has or uh, one of their channel partner manages for a customer, then you know, we can zoom out and look at the map of Australia and see where these connections are actually located. Green is obviously good, and you can see we're here in Bendigo um, for this particular client. Fantastic. Now, what I did wanna show is what happens during a failover type event. So what I'm gonna do is leave our ping tests running to Google there and simulate a failure on the Starlink connection. So if there's a hardware failure, um, something goes wrong with the dish getting hit by lightning, anything like that, this is where we provide backup. But more than just backup, it's a seamless failover. Let me show you how. If we go and unplug the cable here that connects to the PoE adapter here, You'll see in our ping tests, we lose one ping packet, and that's the failover that I was talking about, where we fail over in under one second. And our ping tests continue. If I go and run another speed test on this connection, and just hit go on that, you'll notice that this public IP address here doesn't change. Again, it's one of our IP addresses, not a Starlink IP address. And while the speeds are a lot slower, 80, 85 megabits per second on the download on that, it is still, you know, it's failed over in under one second and still very usable for a home office environment, you know, any sort of environment where they need that continuity of service. Uploads are gonna be affected, so what are we seeing there? Around about four to five megabits per second. This is via a 4G LTE connection, but we failed over in under one second. I'm gonna plug that connection back in and show you guys something else as well. While we're waiting for that to reconnect, I'll just go back over to Netmon and just point out a few other things that are interesting here. So we've got a few connections that are in here that our channel partner has. This is the connection that's over here in Bendigo that was of most interest. You'll see that the traffic sensor here for the 4G LTE sensor has gone red, okay? That's the indication that we get, our network operations team get, to say that a service has gone offline. A Starlink service has gone offline, be it a fiber service has gone offline, whatever type of service. So that's what our guys look for. And if we have a look at the amount of traffic that's flowing across that sensor, normally it would be sitting at almost zero. We do send a bit of keep alive traffic through it to make sure the connection is online, ready for failover, but normally that's green. And now that I've plugged that back in, if we give this another 60 seconds, we'll see that that will go back to green. I'll move on for the time being. 
The other thing that I did want to point out here within Netmon is that we've got a great way of looking at information from a download perspective, what sort of traffic is on the network? You know, if someone says that their internet connection is running slowly or there's a problem with it, we can look into what's called NetFlow statistics and look in here and see, well, you can see where these downloads are all going to. You can see that there's my download of the Linux ISO file consuming the majority of the bandwidth at the moment, the speed tests being the other. So Netmon gives you a great way of being able to do those sort of things. But the other thing that I wanted to point out is as part of most solutions, we deploy voice and video solutions as well. And that's what this Cisco phone here comes into. Let me connect this up and do a demo of the Cisco phone on a video call and see what happens when we fail that um, halfway through a video call as well. Okay guys, for this next test, I wanna show you what happens if the primary Starlink connection has an interruption or a failure during a video conferencing call. So our client has ordered a Cisco video phone as part of the solution that we're deploying for them here in their home office so they can do video conferencing calls to their clients and back to their head office in Melbourne. So what we're gonna do is halfway through a video call, I'm gonna disconnect the cable to the Starlink terminal and so we can see exactly what happens to that call. So I've got one of my staff members back in Brisbane ready to go, ready for this test. So let's run through it. Josh, how are you going? Not too bad. If we can go through that test that I mentioned before where you count down from 10 to 1 and I'm going to disconnect the Starlink cable from the Cisco router at about 7 seconds. So can you count down slowly from 10 to 1 for me please? Sure thing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there we have there that we had the countdown from 10 to 1 and we only lost about two seconds of audio and video during that conference call. So over here on my laptop you can see our pings to Google. They dropped out for one second and it's failed over to 4G LTE. This is a fantastic way of showcasing um, a Starlink plus NetVault 4G LTE failover solution where effectively the, the video conference call has continued without any major interruptions. So that's it for this test. Thanks very much for that, uh, Josh. I'll see you back in Brisbane in a couple of days. Okay, no problem, have a good day. Thanks. Okay, now for the final test. Now, just to prove there's no smoke and mirrors here, I wanna show you guys what happens when I go and physically sever the cable. Do not try this at home. For those of you who've used Starlink services before, you'll know that the cable for Dishy is actually pretty thick. So in order to cut that, I'm gonna need something a bit more heavy duty. Let's go with some industrial wire cutters. Now watch what happens if I go and physically sever this cable. If we have a look at our ping packets to Google, you see there we've lost one ping packet, but then we failed over, even though Dishy is gone. So by failing over to 4G LTE in under one second, we've shown that the service keeps running, Video calls keep working, downloads keep working, everything keeps working because of our seamless 4G LTE failover technology. That's all from me guys. If you've got any questions, please contact our office or email sales at netvault.net.au. We'd be happy to help. Thanks everyone. See you in the next video.